Now we, we, we will take uh, a spiritual word and then we will continue the, the praises of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So I thought we would take some time today to reflect on the month of Kiach being the season for weight training. And I say weight training, I mean weight, W-A-I-T, that we wait on the Lord. And we find ourselves in our lives spending a lot of time waiting. We wait in rush hour traffic. Often, we wait in lines, whether it's in stores or wherever it may be that we stand in lines. And even in this day and age where we always like convenience and we have drive throughs for all kinds of things, sometimes we even have to wait in drive throughs The society we live in is looking for instant response, instant results all the time. That's why the microwave was created, because now people can enjoy a meal in just a few minutes using the microwave. That's also why so many people have smartphones, because the technology allows people to be connected with others instantaneously. You can send a text message to people, you can call them, you can connect to the internet. You have access to so much information with these devices and modern technology now. And the reason is because we as humans are not good at waiting. We don't like to wait. So there's a problem that we face in our lives, and that is that we're always in a hurry. We want to get to the next place. We want to do something else. We want to finish so we can get on with the next thing. But the truth of the matter is God is not in a hurry. And so there is something that disconnects between mankind and the life we live in and society today that's always in a hurry and trying to do the next thing, and God, who is looking for our time, who's asking us to wait on the Lord. So we need to take some time for training on how to wait. And that should start now, especially this season in the month of Kiach. And it brings to mind two very nice verses from the Bible. The first one is from Psalms 27, 14. It says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So this verse tells us that those people who wait on the Lord will have a strong heart, a strong heart that's connected closely with the Lord. Because when we wait on the Lord, we can experience him in such a more deeper, meaningful way. It gives us the strength that we need. And the other verse is from Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Again, there is this connection of waiting on the Lord and gaining strength, that renewed strength. So let's be clear that the waiting we're talking about is not like waiting for a bus or a plane or a train, because we all go through those types of waiting phases. It's just out of our control. We're waiting. And it's not waiting of laziness. Well, we have nothing else to do, so we're just going to wait. It's not that kind of waiting that we're talking about tonight. It's the waiting that is seeking the Lord. The waiting that is persevering and taking time to spend with the Lord. And this waiting is actually more work than working and then serving the Lord. Because this waiting requires a special type of strength. It requires us to surrender the control that we may have in our own life to the Lord and to give up 
our control to his will. And there are a lot of situations that we go through in life that make it difficult for us to wait. One is when we're in a sense of fear. We're scared. We don't know what's coming up next. And so we don't want to wait. We get anxious. Another one is when we feel that there are enemies around us. And we don't want to wait because that gives those enemies opportunity to control us. Another is when we have problems or when we feel forsaken. And the common thing across all of these is an element of panic. And we lose our comfort. And when we wait on the Lord, there will be no panic. There will be no worries because the Lord is our creator and he will provide everything and anything that we need in the due time. But an important element of waiting on the Lord is to do it patiently. This verse from Psalm 37, 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. We need to give God the time to work. And so we have to wait patiently and allow God in his due time, because he knows the best time, to do the work of his will. And that can be giving him time to work in us individually or in other people in our lives or in certain situations that we encounter. But we have to wait patiently. That's an important element of waiting on the Lord. So an important question that we have to ask ourselves, this waiting on the Lord that we're talking about, is this waiting active or passive? As we wait on the Lord? Is that something that we need to be doing something active about or just sitting back and being passive? And the answer to this question comes in, how are we waiting? And I thought it's important to think of four ways that we can wait on the Lord. There's so many ways that somebody can wait on the Lord. But I thought of four ways using the letters of the word wait that helps us remind us of these things. The first one, W, is for worship. A is for acts of kindness. I is in anticipation. And T is trustingly. So let's go through these four and see how we can learn how to wait on the Lord. Number one is worship. And this is waiting prayerfully. And that's why the church, during this month of Kiak, has these praises and vigils that we're going through right now. Because praises and vigils are the highest form of worship. That's when we literally spill our heart and our emotions to the Lord, when we praise and we spend all night long in the church worshiping God. The church also teaches us to fast during the month of Kiach, and this is to prepare for the nativity feast. It's a big feast when the Lord takes flesh and is born and comes to earth. And when we wait prayerfully and we're worshiping, it helps us grow spiritually and develop that deeper bond and relationship with the Lord. It's a chance for us to open our hearts for the Lord. We all know the story. When Jesus was born, there was no place for St. Mary and Joseph to find, to allow baby Jesus to come into this world. And he ended up in barnyard with the animals and hay, and that was the only resting place. So it's important for us to make it a priority to open our hearts and make a special place in our hearts to receive and welcome the Lord during this feast when he's born. The verse from Psalm 25.4 says, says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. And 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. So it's important that when we wait on the Lord, we do it in a way of worship and we do it with prayer. The second characteristic, the A in wait, is acts of kindness. 
And it's important that we spend time, especially during this month of Kiyach, thinking about how we can do acts of kindness to others. These good deeds, these acts of kindness, are pleasing to the Lord. And that's why we read in one of the Gospels of this month, when the angel of the Lord appeared to St. Mary for the Annunciation, he says, St. Mary, you found favor in the Lord. This is how St. Mary finds favor in the Lord, and this is how each one of us can find favor in the Lord through acts of kindness, doing good deeds, and making a difference in other people's lives. And you know, when we make a difference in other people's lives through these good deeds, the blessing ends up in our life. Because through those good deeds, that's the opportunity for us to feel God's presence in our life, and it's a blessing for us. And I'm reminded by the verse in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 that says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having sufficiency in all things may abound in every good deed. So we need to remember that we have sufficiency in all things because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in return, we must do good deeds to others. The third thing is the I in wait, which is in anticipation. We all know that Jesus is coming to be born on earth. But we celebrate this every year. It's a cycle. And we have to be careful that it's not a routine. It's not, oh, okay, it's kiak, so here we go. We're fasting, we're coming to church, and we're doing the vigils. We have to think of it as anticipating the Lord coming into each one of our lives again. And when he does, he's going to work wonders in each one of us. It's going to be a big change, renewed life for each one of us. That's the anticipation that the month of Kiyah brings to us. We are anticipating the Lord not just being born, but to come into our lives and make a big change and for us to grow even more spiritually. And there's a verse in Psalm 62, 5 that says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. And in Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So let's not lose heart as we wait on the Lord in anticipation. And the final Thing that I want to share with you today about waiting on the Lord, the T in wait, is trustingly. The Lord has great plans for you and for me. God always knows what is best for us, and this is what we must trust and believe as part of our faith. We are his children, so he loves us unconditionally and is always looking for our own good. And in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He gave us a promise as his children that he will give us eternal life. So we trust and believe that that will happen. And we wait on the Lord trustingly. And in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Again, we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart, especially during this season and month of Kia. There are so many examples in the Bible and in our church histories of people who waited. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but you can see on this uh, slide the list of so many people. And you'll also see that people waited years, decades, very long time in their lives for the promise of the Lord to be fulfilled. So we must learn from their example and also wait on the Lord. And for those people who wait, there is reward. It's a spiritual reward. But an example that we can relate to that may be more tangible is in baking a cake. When you have a cake mix and you put all the ingredients together and you have it ready, the cake just doesn't appear, right? We have to put that in the oven and we have to wait. And we wait patiently. It could take 30 minutes, it could take an hour, depending on the recipe, the type 
of baking that we're doing. But in the end, we have such a wonderful result in the cake. And we enjoy every bite of it. But we had to wait before we could enjoy it. The same with a woman who's pregnant. They endure through a lot of pain, discomfort, and suffering. But at the end of that journey, there is a bundle of joy in the baby that's coming. And in fact, if you ask a pregnant woman, they probably forget most of the pain that they go through once they see that the baby is born. But the woman had to wait and endure through all that suffering. And again, while because of the waiting, there is a reward in the end. So if you remember, we asked ourselves, waiting on the Lord, is that active or passive? And my response to us today is, it's active. And we must actively wait on the Lord. And we remember four ways of doing that by using the letters of the word wait. Worship, acts of kindness, in anticipation, and trustingly. And in the end, that reward for us will be spiritual strength, and depth. So we pray that the blessings of this month of Kiach and the praises and vigils and the fast be with us all and strengthen us to wait on the Lord. And glory be to God forever. Amen.